Is that, is that okay? Can everybody see it? Yeah. Great. Um, well, look, uh, huge thanks. I'm, I'm amazed at so many people coming tonight. Um, and everybody's welcome. You don't have to be in Carnethy. Um, if, if you're not in Carnethy, maybe just at some point say hello to the person next to you. Um, my name's Ollie Stevenson. I'm here <coughs> to talk about a hike I did last summer called the Pacific Crest Trail, just in case you've accidentally come to the wrong wrong room. Um, and uh, I just wanted to start by saying a big thanks to Dode Allen, who's a friend of mine, who's a professional photographer and makes videos. If anybody needs photography, video work, he does an excellent job. Um, I have quite a keen interest in Maggie's, Maggie's Cancer Support. Uh, it was a big lesson to me to discover that about half of us are going to get cancer at some point in our lives and if it's not you then it's likely to be a family or a friend. Um, these talks are completely free but would love it if you made a donation to Maggie's so you can get it via the QR code there, there's a URL at the end or if you forget all of that just giving Ollie Stevenson PCT and all of that money goes through to Maggie's. Uh, you're welcome to ask questions anytime, or I'll probably be in the pub afterwards, uh, the Bow Bar, which is more or less opposite as you come out, just down on uh, Victoria Street. And really my goal this evening is, is to give you a flavour of, of this hike and to inspire you to go off and find something that you want to do uh, and to inspire you to go and do it whilst you're fit and healthy. Talk will take about 50 minutes uh, and uh, yeah, do stop me anytime. That's the end of my speech. Um, so uh, 27th of May last year, I don't know if you remember what you were doing. Um, I remember because it was my 54th birthday and I was sitting on the southern terminus of the Pacific Crest Trail. Uh, <clears throat> for those of you with good eyesight, you'll notice that in the background is quite a prominent border wall. This is Trump's wall. And uh, the very first thing that you do when you get to the southern terminus uh, is not actually to sit on the monument or to sign the trail register. The very first thing that anybody, any sensible person would do is to have a go at climbing it. <laughs> so uh, this is my son Jack who dropped me at the border. Um, and the conclusion is uh, it's, it's definitely high enough to break a leg if you fell off. And the actual climbing, if you climb, it's not that desperate. However, it is probably the most dangerous climb in the world because at regular intervals, this dirt road is patrolled by heavily armed uh, border patrol, <laughs> which is mad. And then in between, you have heavily armed vigilantes, which I don't think are regulated at all. And they're all gonna shoot on site. And the only reason that Jack is still alive is I believe he's the first person to ever attempt to climb from America into Mexico. <laughs> so, um, Pacific Crest Trail, just to put this in context, so uh, there are a number of brilliant trails in the States, uh, but the, the three classic long ones, Appalachian Trail, which John Chambers is about to start, uh, running down the Rockies, you have the Continental Divide, which is also a brilliant bike route, not on the same path, but adjacent to, and then up the mountains on the west coast is the Pacific Crest Trail. And whilst these all differ in some of the fine detail, they're all roughly two and a half thousand miles and they all roughly take somewhere in the region of about five months to do. Don't know if we can turn off the kettle in the background. Thank you very much. Um, and just looking at the PCT in a little bit more detail, I'll come back to this map a few times so you don't have to remember it, but for um, just, just to make sense of it, this is the West Coast. So this is the border with Mexico. You've got LA, uh, I can't quite read, but I think that's San Francisco, and then Seattle up here somewhere. Sorry, Seattle up here. Um, and the PCT splits into five sections. So the first of these is known as the desert, 700 miles. The High Sierra, 390 miles for anybody that's done or wants to do the John Muir Trail. 
that is um, a section of, of the High Sierra. Northern California, another 600 miles. Oregon, 455 miles. And Washington, 500 miles. Each of these really is, would be a kind of a long distance hike in its own right. And the trick with what's called a through hike is to start at the beginning and to finish at the end. And, a, and then for anybody that's been to Yosemite, uh, that's, that's Yosemite. And the trail actually goes through the national park. It doesn't go through the, the big main valley, but it goes through the national park. Um, to get to do the PCT for most people requires substantial amount of planning. So I'd been dreaming about this for probably at least three and a half years, like seriously thinking about it. Um, so you need a permit, a visa, extended insurance. You need to think about what you're doing with your job because most companies won't let you off for six months. Um, I went out a week early, uh, so I got the permit and the visa. I spent $250 just buying energy bars. Uh, most of the places that you get food, you actually come off trail, hitch into the nearest town, buy a whole load of ship food. And, um, but there are certain places where the only resupply is to mail yourself a box of food. So that was $250 on bars alone, just for the ones I was posting. That wasn't all the rest of the rubbish food that I was eating. And it took me about a week to buy it, to sort it into days, into calories, into boxes. And so this, I took over my in-laws garage for a week and they uh, put up with that, which was very kind. Um, uh, so that's a little bit about what the PCT is, a little bit about how you go about doing it, but I'm aware that a lot of you won't know who I am. So just a tiny bit of background, just to put this in context. I, I'm uh, married to Jane and we've got three adult kids. This is a couple of years ago, but they're all off at, at university or beyond now. Um, and in the context of Carnethy, so for people in the club, uh, I've been in the club for probably <clears throat> 20 years. Uh, 14 of those, I organized possibly the worst hill race in Scotland called the Carnethy Five. Um, it is actually, it was an amazing race. It's had a, a hiatus because of COVID. Uh, I think this was 2017, uh, Chris Busby's photo. Uh, it's done in February, so it tends to be either fine or very not fine. This was a tough year. Um, and then in 2020, just a month before lockdown, uh, was in the middle of Storm Dennis. So this is 60 mile an hour winds. And I love it because everybody's running sideways. Uh, and this is Peter McDonald's photograph, amazing photo. And in the series, so he was up there in 60 mile an hour winds for an hour. He got a photo, I've lost it, of a number flying off. And it was just hanging in the air. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, so, so I've organised Kennethy Five for a number of years. Um, and I suppose the other thing in the context of the club, if anybody that reads the journal, a couple of, uh, and Sean is here, he does a great job as the editor, a few issues ago was possibly the most OCD article in the history of the journal, which was written by me. And it was about the third lockdown, which I spent attempting to climb the underside of the bridge at Megatland over the canal. So I don't know if anybody's, the rugby club's over here. Uh, this is 10 meters uh, and I spent quite a while <laughs> doing that, eventually succeeded. Um, yeah, so uh, I grew up in London, I lived in the north of England, I worked in the States and moved to Edinburgh just over 20 years ago. Uh, Jane, three kids, two cats. Um, I've really done a combination of climbing and running and cycling all of my adult life. Um, and uh, my last job was working for a medical software company, but I stopped in order to do the PCT. So describing what it is um, and uh, how you go about doing it, a bit of background about me. I think the main theme tonight really is actually why I did it. And uh, I guess I was kind of lucky because of all the people I met on trail, I felt like I had the, a, a very clear reason for going out there. And uh, for those of you that don't know me, at the end of 2018, I went from being fit and healthy to uh, being extremely unwell. And I had stage four blood cancer 
and six rounds of chemo and a, has anybody had a chest drain? I can say it's one of the less pleasant things. So this was my third chest drain. This bag uh, is about two litres of chylus fluid that was sitting on my right lung. Over the last 10 weeks, I'd taken off probably a similar amount every week. Uh, so I was basically drowning in my own chylus fluid. Um, and it was quite a difficult time. At the low point, I was unable to walk five metres between my bed and the toilet. So five metres, I was put in a wheelchair and wheeled to the toilet. And uh, I consider myself to be incredibly lucky because I've survived and I've regained my health and fitness. And um, it, was, it was Jane in February last year who said, you're fit and healthy, you need to go off and do the things you wanna do now whilst you can before your cancer comes back. And I'm lucky because my cancer is treatable, but it's not curable. So I'm gonna get periods where I'm <clears throat> completely normal like now it will come back, it will get treated, and then I'll get another chunk of remission, hopefully. So the very darkest time in hospital, I could transport myself thousands of miles away by dreaming of doing the PCT. And I could uh, get rid of most of the awfulness and, and just visualize the mountains and think about the logistics and the planning. Um, and so when I went to do it this year, I thought I'm going to set myself a goal and I want to see if I can do it in 100 days. So it's, it's about 2,650 miles. So that's a marathon a day. Uh, but if you want to finish in 100 days and you want some rest days, that means you need to go a bit further every day because otherwise it's going to be more than 100 days. And uh, my motivation really was, I think, probably the single biggest uh, thing I had for my PCT and I just wanted to see what my body could do and uh, I can honestly say I didn't have a bad day on the PCT because relative to what I've been through here it's just a hike. <laughs> um, anyway that's all the heavy stuff um, so the first section the desert um, so skirts around the basin of LA uh, so starts at the border and right from the get-go I thought desert, not much going on. And I was completely blown away. Just the beauty, the, the, the abundance of plant and animal life is more than you see in all of the UK uplands combined. So that was kind of misconception number one. It, it was very beautiful right from the beginning. Um, even the rocks are beautiful. So I don't know if you can see, this is the, this is the head of an eagle with its wings spread out and no guesses but this is called Eagle Rock um, and then this is a wild camp I was completely by myself I was just beneath the summit of Mount Williamson this is 30 miles from downtown LA one of the world's biggest busiest cities and there is the very real prospect of bears mountain lions snakes and you think how many how many places in the world that close to such a big city have got that quality of wildlife it's, ast it's absolutely astounding. Um, there's, there's some quizzes tonight, so I don't, I don't uh, and I've got some amazing prizes in here. So, um, so uh, this is to make sure you don't fall asleep. So uh, maybe, uh, uh, these dates are all a bit, a, bit, uh, a bit vague, but maybe 20 days, so it's about three weeks into the hike. Your, your, your life is very much dictated on where you can get food and where you can get water. So there's, there's a, a critical point in the desert, probably about the only flat section of the whole trail, it's maybe 30 miles across the top of the Mojave Desert, and you come to this slightly surreal place called Hiker Town, so there are kind of clues in the name, it's a place that hikers stop. I got this off uh, Street View earlier today, so it, it's just a dirt road <laughs> and a dirt plot, but around the perimeter are these brightly decorated facades of a western town so you're not that far from Hollywood, so this is kind of clue to the answer. But you've got like a hotel, a bar, a casino, a, I don't know, sheriff's office, and these are all just facades. So inside, plywood, just a really rough bed, a bit, a bit kind of skanky, to be honest. What's, what's Hiker Town famous for amongst the hiking community? 
what would what would Hiker Town be used for? Gunfight. That's close, but um, the clue is probably in the browsing history of about half of the males in the room. Okay. It is used apparently for the filming of Western themed pornos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so um, Keith, I'm, I'm, I, I know you were the only one that answered. So um, whilst I know that you don't watch Western themed pornos, um, <laughs> congratulations. This is, this is a typical breakfast. So um, Thank you. you might want to stick that in the bin when you get home. Um, <laughs> um, and then from here, um, th th this, is, this is probably the flattest, driest stretch. And so I set off at 5 p.m to walk through the night because there's no shade and there's no water. Um, and the first couple of miles, you're walking along what in the UK would be a pretty minor river. I mean, it's very fast flowing. It's maybe, I don't know, five meters wide. This is the LA Aqueduct, and it brings water down from the east side of the Sierra for hundreds of miles. And this one body of water, I believe, is one of the prime sources of water for the whole of Southern California. It's, it's astounding. Um, anyway, so walked all the way through the night through till 2 p.m. the next day. And uh, this is the first, first road, and then back into the hills again. So it's just that one flat stretch. And uh, friends, Dave and his son, uh, Jonathan, met me. They actually met me three times. These are sort of extended family with uh, water and food. Uh, so overnight was, was actually my biggest day. I did 49 miles, uh, but actually felt okay because it was cool. Um, and then shortly afterwards, I mentioned that water is one of the key things. So you're in the desert, you're frequently doing 20 miles. So 20 miles in the heat is a lot of water. Um, and so you're carrying probably five liters and, and then some amazing, whoop, whoa, 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 sorry, shot away. Let me just come back, oh, I've ruined it now. Um, you get uh, people leaving out these big caches of water. So that's about 30 of the big office water coolers. Um, and these are just, good, generous people. They're, they're called trail angels. I'll just give you an overview of those in a bit. Um, and at the end of this section, I think maybe 25 days in, you reach the end of the desert and then the start of the High Sierra. It's a place called Kennedy Meadows. If anybody's seen the film Wild with Cheryl Strayed, that's um, kind of features in the film. And two other uh, friends of extended family. I'd never met them and they drove one of my food boxes for four and a half hours, cool. Molly and Matt, just to come and say hello, which, which was amazing. Um, this is my typical sleep setup. So I was mostly sleeping under the stars. If there was any risk of mosquitoes, which was maybe 15 nights, I had this sort of bug coffin, uh, which I could suspend with my hiking poles and then laugh at all the mosquitoes on the outside. Um, and then into the High Sierra, and, and I think for many people this is the sort of the golden section. I certainly thought it was going to be the highlight. I'd done 200 miles before because it's coincident with the John Muir Trail, and this time it was even more beautiful. Um, I think maybe I was just a bit earlier in the season. Uh, it goes up to 4,000 meters, 13,000 feet at Forrester Pass. This is the highest point. And then later that day, I met this guy. And for those of you with good eyesight, he's got a pretty small backpack uh, and he's carrying a full-size chainsaw. So I walked I walk past him and I said, um, thank you for your, you know, all of your good work keeping the trail clear because the, the trail is immaculate. And he's like, oh, I'm not a trail crew. I'm, I'm a hiker and I started at Mexico just like you did. So at, at this point, he's probably walked about 800 miles carrying an eight or nine kilo chainsaw <laughs> across his shoulder. My bag, my, the dry weight of my bag was about three or four kilos. So he was doubling the weight again. Um, and he said, I used to work on a fire crew. We used to fight wildfires. I lost several colleagues. I then had a period of serious sort of mental illness and I'm carrying this chainsaw to remember my fallen colleagues. And I just thought, what an astounding guy. And he's, he's carrying that all the way to, 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 uh, to, to, to Canada. So that was, that was quite memorable. His, his name was Dylan. And then that evening, I'm, uh, I'm quite tired. I've just done a 
big day, like 30 miles. I've been over 4,000 meters and uh, I really need to eat. And I kind of get to this random bit of trail deep in the high Sierra and I meet two Canadian Mounties and they stop me and they say, where's your Canadian visa? It's like, I just like, you know, when you're, when you're hungry, I just could not compute. So where's your visa? I, said, uh, I don't have one because I'm still another 2,000 miles, 1,500 miles away. Um, and then the guy makes a lunge for my hand and it's like, what the hell? And um, <clears throat> I look down and he's put a Mars bar and an apple in my hand. It's like, this is just, and he's got an Irish accent. Um, <laughs> So I mentioned trail angels leaving water. Uh, these guys are trail angels. They're not shock horror. They're not uh, mounted police. Um, and for, for a weekend every year, they get a mule train and they hike in for eight miles with something like 120 kilos of food to feed all of the hikers that come through. So they cooked me dinner. They gave me Irish whiskey. Um, and as if, as, as if it couldn't get any better, a friend of mine from the, oh, a friend of mine from the Bay Area um, Tom Roberts hiked in with, with three days more hiking food so I, I could do a big stretch of the High Sierra without, without dropping out. Bit of hiker humour. It's actually, that's a big rock. I mean, that's double my arm span. Um, and th this is typical of, of the High Sierra. This is near, uh, so I've just, just come down from Muir Pass, named after John Muir, who grew up in, in Dunbar. And I suppose the whole essence of through hiking and the, the five sections is you're covering such a big geography and such a range of climate that you're constantly adapting your setup. So I set off very late in the season. Uh, so the desert was hotter and there was less water, but it meant that when I got to the Sierra, whilst there were extensive snow patches, I didn't need ax and crampons and all of the passes I could get over Whereas if, if you started early and you were going maybe at an average pace, then the Sierra might actually present quite a serious winter obstacle. Um, but it worked out uh, amazingly and I got these views. And this is typical of the sort of place that I would stop. I would just hike all day and I would find a fat piece of earth and I would sleep under the stars with this as my sunset and my sunrise. Pine cone, everything's bigger in the States. <coughs> And then into Northern California. So uh, uh, <laughs> this is really obvious, but maybe I was being a bit thick, but California is about uh, three fifths of the whole walk. So you're in California for a long time. And I suppose another essence of, of through hiking is you do need a certain level of resilience. And if, if, uh, if you have a problem, you either need to fix it or you're gonna be going home. And uh, these guys I loved because they're having a great time. They're stopping for a snack mid-morning probably. And they're laughing because this guy, so by this stage, the mosquitoes were bad. Maybe a week of the whole trip, mosquitoes were like midge levels of bad. And the zip on this guy's tent had broken. And anybody that's been to the West Coast in summer with the midges knows that that would be, a, that would be game over for me. Um, this guy solved it by hitching into the nearest town and buying himself this tennis racket. And the tennis racket has electric wires. And he's laughing because he's just gone zip, 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 And he's just killed all of the mosquitoes around him. And he says that's, he just did it once in his tent each night. And it was like the mosquitoes knew and they wouldn't come back. Um, um, the, uh, I suppose the, 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 the key features of, of Northern California to me are summarized. I hope this video plays. Uh, this is only a very short clip, uh, but I'll, I'll uh, let me just see if this works. Sunday, 31st of July. I'm about a day and a third away from the trail closure at Etna Summit Trailhead. It's been pretty hot for the last few days and I've come uh, to a water go. source. Yeah. So this tiny trickle it's good enough. If I get my trowel, I can fill up a litre in maybe 30 seconds or something. I was just about to fill up. No, I'm sorry, I don't notice this little guy. Anyway, uh, key features are lots of snakes that might and be not much water. Green. 
Mojave so rattlesnake. A, I think they're I the most poisonous snakes in the states. And there was a tiny so I might trickle, give this place and Hermes. I thought, well, the obvious thing is to sit down on the bank, and uh, it's going to take about a minute per bottle. And you do it by putting a leaf or your your trowel, um, and then that helps funnel the flow because there's no way that you're going to fill up using this water into your bottle. And I was just about to sit down, and the final second, there was a six foot northern pacific rattlesnake uh, which i very nearly sat on and i now know that there's a whole family of rattlesnakes and they kind of they kind of range from sort of trip ending to immediately life ending uh, and this was one of the latter so i'm quite pleased not to have sat on it um still incredibly beautiful you just you, you it's almost like your eyes just get drawn into the detail so you get into this lovely sort of hypnotic state where you're just so much more aware of, of, of the world around you and the beauty within it. Um, I mentioned sort of sunrises and sunsets. So this was um, sunrise from Spanish Peak. This is a, almost halfway along the hike. And um, you get into this sort of meditative state, really, where your, your day, your existence is hiking, eating and sleeping. And that's it, and repeating, and and sort of bookended with an amazing sunrise and amazing sunset. But it wasn't, it didn't all go to plan. And about halfway, <clears throat> I'd stopped filtering my water, which is a stupid mistake, <clears throat> and I ended up getting very sick. And by total chance, uh, my son Jack and his lovely girlfriend Tris happened to be passing on their two-month road trip. And so they swept me up and we spent a couple of days at Mount Larson uh, and my body was, was just sort of withering because I was desperate for food, but any food I was consuming was just being ejected straight away and I was getting weaker and weaker. <clears throat> and so they actually dropped me with my friend in the Bay Area and I spent a week on his sofa. I'm being off trail, I ended up being off trail for 10 days and it's quite difficult because you've, you've put so much effort in getting there and so much effort physically to reach this point and then you think well if my body can't cope then 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 that might be the end but but on the 10th day I started to be able to eat again and my friend happened to be driving back to the mountains and so he dropped me back and within a day I was completely back to sort of full strength and um, so here I am at the midpoint so I had about 30 seconds at the midpoint. This is just a post in the middle of a completely anonymous forest. <clears throat> and I had about 30 seconds. So it's like, wow, I have just walked 1,325 miles. And um, that's quite a nice feeling. That's more than double. I'm, I'm not really a hiker. I mean, that's, that's the big irony of all of this. Um, and I had 30 seconds of, wow, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. And then about 20 minutes of, oh, my God. I've got 1,325 miles to go. And I, I'd given quite a lot to reach the halfway point. I really wasn't that confident. But it kind of, you just kind of bring it back and it's, it's stuff I've learned from long runs and I guess definitely learned from all of my chemo is just taking stuff a day at a time and just living in the present. And, and when you maintain that, you can keep going for, for quite some time. Um, in the background is... A, a lot of evidence of previous burns so these big fires on the west coast and in total I walked for perhaps 200 miles so that's like twice the length of the West Island Way just through burnt forest and it's it's kind of sad it's kind of scary because these things just collapse um, but I suppose the main thing is is just the absence of life means it's completely silent so you're walking in absolute silence. Um, so it's sad, but, but I have also seen these areas regenerate. So it's, it's whilst I'm sure it's happening more and more frequently, uh, they do hopefully, some of these do hopefully regenerate. Uh, so by this stage, I'm quite hungry. Whenever I get to town, <coughs> there's a big price for this. <coughs> I, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going into the nearest diner and I'm eating. So how many breakfasts am I eating by this stage of the trip? Four, four, five. Uh, I'm just five. 
Um, I, look, I wish it was four, but it was actually three. So um, Willie gets the, probably the best prize in the bag. So I didn't take a stove to save weight, but I had an empty tub from Tesco, so I'd just eat it or ditch it. But that was what I'd rehydrate all my food cold with, whether it was Keith's porridge for breakfast or instant noodles for dinner. It was that exact tub. So yeah, treasure it. Um, <laughs> So yeah, the three breakfast day, that was, that was pretty good. Um, <laughs> you can tell by the orange juice, I was eating pretty fast. Um, and, then, uh, and then into Oregon. So I, uh, this section of trail uh, just ahead of me was closed because, because there was an active fire that had just burst out of nowhere. Um, and uh, extended family, uh, Jeannie and Chris, came and picked me up and drove me around the closure and I had a day in their house just to eat and sleep and wash. Um, and I suppose one of the most memorable bits was I met Jeannie's son, Wyatt. So Wyatt is literally a man mountain. So these guys are probably my height. So I'm not very tall, but he's huge. He's like six foot seven and he's massive. So he used to run a wildfire crew. So a bit like Dylan with the chainsaw. Wyatt did the same thing and he did it for maybe six years. He loved it uh, and he's got horrendous stories and this is supposed to be a video, but he, he would describe being in a clearing surrounded by fire all the way around and his clearing would fill with all the animals that were also desperately fighting for their lives. So his clearing would have bears, mountain lions, rattlesnakes, all of the birds, all of the other animals, all desperately fighting for their lives. And the front of his crew were, were guys, <laughs> he said they were bigger than him, I'm not sure that's true, <laughs> called Sawyers, and they would have the massive chainsaws, and they would be fighting for their lives, chopping this stuff down. And in the heat of it, it was not unusual that they would go straight through a rattlesnake. And a rattlesnake is generally got, don't mess with me, written on the back and the less experienced Sawyers would go to pick up the head, because it's a trophy and because they're men, and, um, and the head is still capable of biting for about two minutes after it's been decapitated. So if you remember nothing else from my talk, <laughs> don't, don't pick that up. Um, <clears throat> a, oh, that does work. Yeah, so, um, and I think that that fence is that fence in the background. And I think these two guys have just lost their everything except for what they've got in those two paper bags. So it's kind of a moral here is, is if it's a fire, <laughs> don't mess with it. And they can easily outrun you because it's just the wind. You're, you're, you're trying to outrun the wind. So if the wind's in the wrong direction. Um, still incredibly beautiful. Um, so it's kind of a thistle type thing. And then very late this night, uh, just a little stream, and it just had a little pool. So I took all my clothes off and had a wash, as I did whenever I saw water. Uh, and this toad, it was, it was his pool. And he, he did not give a stuff about me, and he didn't move at all. I was, I was quite impressed. And that night, um, I, uh, there was huge thunder and lightning over Mount Shasta, these big volcanoes as you're going up, up the west coast. It's quite an impressive display, it's 20 miles away. I thought, oh, that's fine. So I just slept out in my bug bivvy and then woke several hours later with my bag drenched, rain on my face and it's like, oh shit. So I got up and I hurriedly put the tarp on. So I only, only used the tarp maybe seven nights. And this is another high stakes quiz. What's wrong with that pitch? What's that, sorry? It's a bit low. I'm, well, I can't give you another prize. Like a creek going through it? Looks like there might be a creek. Creek, yeah, yeah there, was, there could have been a creek. Um, but I'm going to give it to Sean because he, he was brave enough to say something. The, the ground, it's, so, it's so dry and the ground is so hard that when it rains, it bounces. So you don't want the, the corner, you don't want it so high, you want a lower pitch with a much wider, wider thing because it bounces. So you actually get wet from the bounce back. It's flashback. Um, so, um, look, I tell you, I could eat this in a single sitting, which is 
Pringles. <laughs> and I would never have touched them before, and I have to resist when I go to the supermarket now. But loads of calories and salt, if you could pass that back. Thank you very much. Well, well done, Sean. Treasure it, treasure it. <clears throat> Uh, my, I'd, I'd say that my diet was pretty standard for the PCT. Uh, just for those of you that are winning prizes, I did, um, to my amazement, when I came back, I was quite tired for some time, and I had a blood test, uh, and my diet had been so bad that I gave myself pre-diabetes. <laughs> it's, now, it's now cured. Um, anyway, I... Uh, <laughs> many times, right from the first day, I would meet Americans. I love Americans. My wife is American. Um, and they would say to me, dude, dude, your pack is so dialed. And you're just thinking, what on earth are they talking about? But what they mean is, uh, th these are two random people. I didn't even meet them. This is outside a, 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 a park service restaurant. So, oh, sorry, spoiler. Uh, so that's sort of average size of pack, maybe average slightly large. That's probably average small. And then that's mine. So that's about the size of a, tw it's 25 liters for people that, work with these things and so I took nothing if I wasn't wearing it and if I wasn't using it every day I posted it home so no trousers no stove no tent uh, and so I got the lightest of everything and the very lightest of anything is the stuff that you just don't even take with you um, and actually for me that worked really well Crater Lake anybody been to Crater Lake yeah I mean it's I, you know, people say Americans don't do understatement, but this is to lakes what the Grand Canyon is to canyons, what Yosemite Valley is to valleys. It is spectacular and it's enormous. It's probably 10 miles across. And when you're looking down on it, if there are any boats in there, they're so small that you can't see them. And to call that a lake is just uh, in in incredible. Um, and then you, you're in this beautiful rolling trail it's it's sort of mixed woodland it's uh, it's it's uh, nicely shaded so Oregon is actually pretty fast I was able to do some some sort of bigger miles going through Oregon and one morning walking along and you kind of see this sort of semi official looking sign and then you stop and think oh trail magic ahead what on earth does that mean and then you see trail magic ahead again and then around another corner you meet this lovely retired couple who are spending the whole weekend cooking breakfast for any hiker that comes past and I had a lovely chat the to chat with these lovely people and they said yeah you know our son did the PCT a few years ago and he received lots of trail magic which is given by trail angels uh, and this is just our bit to put something back and I suppose that's another thing that really impressed me on the trail is there's so much that we can be depressed about in the world with war and politics and you know, all these dreadful things going on, but actually just reconnecting with people and just kind, good, generous people is so restorative and so good for the soul. And, and there was just this by, by the bucket load on the PCT. Uh, north of here, um, there weren't really national parks or there weren't so many national parks, but it's a sense of there is so much wilderness that they almost don't need to classify all of it as national parks. They became these things called wilderness areas. And each wilderness area, I was like, this can't possibly get any better. So this is Three Sisters wilderness area, a lot of lava beds, obsidian. So this it's kind of like a diamond type uh, black coal rock. It's incredibly hard. I only know about it because my son played video games and it was like the top sword was made of obsidian. Um, what's that, sorry? It does, exactly, exactly. <laughs> that was the first thought, the first thought. Um, and then uh, most of the significant miles were marked with rocks or with sticks or something. So 2,000 miles, I was pretty pleased for 30 seconds. And then I was thinking, I've still got 650 miles to walk. That's not just like a... There's half of your brain that thinks, oh, it's no distance. And then half of you thinks, actually, that's a long walk in itself and I'm quite tired. Um, for anybody in Carnethy that remembers Tracy, Tracy Ballinger, so she's moved back to the States. She's hiked the PCT. Uh, she was in Bend, Oregon, so she picked me up and I had 24 hours to eat and wash my clothes. It was really nice to see her. And then she took me around what was actually the third of my fire closures. 
Um, and these are mandatory closures. There's tape and there's a ranger, so you can't, even if you wanted to sneak through, uh, you'd be a lunatic because the fire would outrun you. So, um, <clears throat> and then the final final bit is is Washington, uh, and I, this is this is the state. This is the section that really properly blew me away, and it is the best bits of the High Sierra. So jagged mountains and absolute wilderness, and very green. Uh, here I was hiking late into the night. Uh, and that's Mount Rainier in the background. I was above this, this cloud inversion and I slept on this little ridge completely by myself. Each night I would lie awake just thinking, wow, what an incredible day. So I'd go from hiking to being set up to being in my sleeping bag in about 20 minutes. And each time I'd sort of run through the day and think this has just been amazing. I really need to write this down and then two minutes later, poof, asleep. And I'd wake up and think, oh, I'll write it tonight. And then the next night, be like two minutes later, bang. So this night, I'm awake for two minutes and I'm looking at the sky and it's spectacular sky. And this object cruises across like near enough that I can see about 50 different portholes. So it looks like an aeroplane, no wings, no tail, no engine. I'm just thinking, what the hell? And it's, it's crossing for long enough that I take a photo, I take a video, and then two thirds of the way across a clear sky, it just switches off. And I'm just like, I'm definitely seeing things. But there's a big prize at stake. What is this? That's an excellent guess. You, you might win the prize unless somebody gets a better answer. Chinese balloon. <laughs> Chinese balloon. You, you're, you're now the closest, but. Still no cigar. Um, it is Elon Musk's, is it Starlink, Skylink? And so he launches a string of 50 satellites and then through time they disperse into their own geospatial orbit. And then if you're a subscriber, God, I sound like I'm advertising. If you subscribe, you can then get global high-speed internet wherever you are in the world. Uh, but Neil, um, that was a prize. So I'm gonna give you dinner. Um, so this, this might be dinner for two. So, if you have a word with Willie so you can borrow his pot. So, instant noodle um, with some, this is actually vegan tuna in a pouch, and then probably just half a packet of couscous because you don't want to eat it all in one go. It, it's pretty nice. Um, if you could pass that back. You can, you can thank me later. Um, and then, uh, so I've had this incredible sunset. I'm above this cloud inversion. I've just seen Starlink cruising overhead. Um, and I hope this works because in the morning uh, is the sunrise, which is a time lapse. That's actually me that jumped past there. So just see it again, but just look at the clouds just down below. Absolutely amazing. And this was a random hiker who'd hiked up uh, and she'd set it up and uh, she emailed it to me, Andrea Hayes, if ever she watches this. So it's not my time lapse, but it's uh, pretty nice. Um, and then, yeah, Washington in all its glory. So beautiful mountains, a lot more greenery uh, and a bit more hiker humor. And five days from the end, this is a pretty sketchy glacial outflow, Kennedy Creek, 20 feet sort of log balance of death it's 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 wet uh, you really don't want to fall in this this river the guidebook advises that you clip your emergency beacon to your body because if you go in the water you're probably not coming out or you're certainly not coming out with your bag um, and so I went across it's, it, it says don't do this alone but I was hiking alone, so I went across <laughs> uh, and I looked back to see these two on the other side. And, and I, I thought particularly this guy, I, I just felt this sort of sense of duty. And so I went back, which felt just as precarious, and I, I carried his bag across. And there is a, a notion of, of trail names, so it's quite difficult 
to be introduced using your first name because you meet hundreds of people and you'll forget everybody's name. But if it's a trail name, you tend to remember it. So he was called King Magnus, and this guy's trail name was his dad. So that, that was quite, quite, easy, quite easy to remember. Um, and if you, if you have a look at King Magnus, um, another big prize. How old is Magnus? 11. Who said 11? Have you seen this talk before? Um, so he's, he started age 10. Um, oh, right, yeah, yeah. So this, this, this is the second best prize. So you, you ditch your big heavy bottles, and everybody uses these one litre. It's usually a smart water bottle. doesn't matter what's in there. It's just the bottle because they fit really well in your bag, and you can get them without taking your bag off. So you need just four more of these, and you're ready for the PCT. <laughs> um, we're almost at the end now, I promise. Um, what a view. This is called Cutthroat Pass. <laughs> Slightly nicer view than the name. Um, and a day later, again, I'm in a, a sort of wooded valley. I'm by myself. It's, it's trees, and I, I go around one more bend, and I reach the northern terminus. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, quite a nice feeling for 20 seconds. And then I've still got 30 miles from here to get to the nearest trailhead. It's, it's that remote. Um, and, uh, and I kind of know from other big trips that you don't really process these things at the time. It often takes, takes quite a while to sort of sink in. Uh, but I guess I was there long enough to sort of reflect a little bit on my, my journey and the fact that, you know, at one extreme three and a half years ago, I hadn't been able to get five meters to the toilet and I'd now just hiked uh, from Mexico to Canada. So I felt, did feel quite pleased. Um, for the stats bores, um, sorry, this is going off the screen. I ended up doing just shy of 200 miles of the whole distance because of the fire closures. So I had to skip those. But actually, that's been affecting the PCT for at least the last 15 years. I just hadn't realized. I did it in 88 days. So that was 77 hiking days. So my average hiking day was 31 miles a day. Um, and I've subsequently found out that about 4,000 people start the PCT and about 480 finish. That's about 12%. Um, so I kind of thought, you know, this is it, um, and I've just got to walk back to the trailhead, and so I'm kind of in my own little bubble. Uh, quite a long day. I've been doing several weeks that were quite long by this stage. So my last day, I don't know if this video is going to play. Friday, 2nd of September, 2022. I, it's about 7 p.m. I've just, I was at the northern terminus about 1 p.m. today, and I've got, a, I'm about 10 miles into a, 30 mile walk south back to the nearest trailhead. Uh, wild, beautiful, PCT continues to be absolutely amazing. Just turn the camera around, get a glimpse. So huge, craggy mountains all around. Generally go pretty well. And then notice this. Pretty big fire. They closed the last eight miles of the PCT. Luckily, I got through, and it's uh, a fire just as big on the west as well. So, I think I'm going to be one of the last people to have made it to the northern terminus and back out again safely. So, yeah, I'd been in the woods and I was blissfully unaware that I was now in an active fire zone on both sides of the trail. Uh, and I first spotted it because I went for a swim in this lake <laughs> and that was I'd sort of looking at one side and it was blue and beautiful and the other side it's like what the hell um, and it got so bad that rangers hiked in to clear anybody that was that was in the exclusion zone so previous few previous week I'd been doing probably I don't know 34 mile days this was a 35 mile day I was quite tired and I said to the rangers look I'm obviously hiking out can I sleep tonight and I'll carry on in the morning? And they said, oh yeah, no, you'll be fine. Just carry on in the morning. So I went to bed about 10 o'clock, was asleep in two minutes. I slept for two hours and then a, a random hiker stopped and shook me awake and said, the ranger's just been in touch with my little, her little um, um, their beacon. You can get, receive text messages by satellite. Uh, and the ranger says, 
the wind has changed and that fire is now two miles away and advancing and you need to wake up and you need to carry on hiking. So uh, funnily enough, I didn't actually have any problems <laughs> getting up uh, and carrying on and all the way out to the end of my hike. And uh, this, is, this is the penultimate slide. It's the penultimate question. So um, how many pairs of shoes did I get through? In between all those? Five. five. Who said five? John. Excellent. Yeah, five pairs of shoes. Uh, John, I'll give you the best one because you're actually going to use these. Shoe strings. Abomination. Absolute abomination. But they don't go off in the heat. So you can eat those. And then calories, cashews and uh, raisins. Peanut m ms probably the most calorie-dense food. That will keep you going for, for, about, for about three hours. Um, <laughs> And then um, just going all the way back, so I've, 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 I've um, uh, this is the last question, last slide. So at the beginning, when I, in the context of Kanethi, I sort of introduced myself uh, using the Megatland Bridge. So that is 10 meters, and the PCT is 4.2 million meters. <laughs> so which took longer? Uh, it's a bit of a trick question. I thought it was the bridge, but thankfully that only took me 58 days. Um, <laughs> uh, the PCT was 88 days. Um, I, I, I'm not sure who won that prize. Uh, anyway, um, so look, thank you uh, to everybody that helped. There was lots of people that helped in the States. Thanks everybody for listening. Um, questions, and I'll just quickly jump in and say, that's Maggie's, please, please give them something. Uh, the club's paying for the hall and for the tea and coffee and all of that shit please give something to Maggie's um, if if you can't use that that's the URL uh, and uh, I was uh, lucky enough I wasn't looking for this but um, a friend of mine put me on his podcast a, a, a month or two ago Go Mountain Goats Finley Wild if you want to hear any more of my drivel so th thank you very much does anybody have any questions? Do you know your coin? Uh, I think it w I think my average was, I don't know the total, but I think the daily was about six or 7,000 feet and 31 miles. So, yeah. So it's not quite the Ramsey that you did, age 50. What was your trail name? Oh, God. Um, so, um, yeah, look, so I, I totally messed up with my trail name. Uh, so I thought that you chose it in advance and... I went for Sassanac, which is a derogatory Scottish term for the English, because I, I thought that was, you know, whatever. Um, and I even had it sewn on my backpack. Um, and um, Tracy warned me that Americans would have no clue. And I was like, oh, I'm sure they'll know. And sure enough, nine out of 10 people had no clue, except there was like one in 10. And it was, it was a woman that explained this to me. And she said, she said, you know, the only people that will understand your trail name are women in their 30s and 40s who watch Outlander. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she said, she said the, the reason they watch Outlander is it's full of romance and sex, and it's got a really hot male lead. And then there was a pause. And then they would, they would always say, but Sassanite was female. Why did you choose such a stupid trail name? <laughs> So, <laughs> Keith. No tea, no hot meals. Is that right? But you, you would gorge whenever you got to a town. You would just go crazy. I'd have. Oh, of course, I'm cheating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was definitely cheating. Yeah. But still, I couldn't manage without tea anywhere. <laughs> and, and, and the, 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 the so, so the, 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 the one expression you hear all the time is hike your own hike. And, and that is, is a bit of a rubbish expression, but it, you, everybody has their own goal and their own reason for doing it and their own way of doing it. And I wanted to do it a bit quicker and therefore I wanted the smallest possible bag. And if you take a stove and you take a tent, you'll have an amazing time and it will take you five or six months. And that wasn't what I wanted to do, so. Did you have a break in Java? Tiny runs, yeah, if I was late, yeah. I did, and uh, I, I felt awful, but you'd, you'd run down to meet somebody and they would think that you'd just run a thousand miles from Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was like the last two miles. But don't tell them if they're listening. How many 
Yeah, so... Um, they all going in the same direction? Yes, yeah, so about... Uh, uh, th I think 3,500 people go north. It's maybe slightly easier with the weather and about 500 people come south. So because I was going by myself, I did want to meet people, so I went north. I started at the very end of... They, they issue permits for three months and they do that to reduce the pressure on the trail to keep it wild. And whilst it's a pain in the arse, it works. And the trail is amazingly wild. Um, so because I started so late, I saw very few people for the first few weeks, maybe five, five, 10 people a day. But by the end, I'd caught what's known as the bubble. So that's people on the average start date traveling at the average speed. And that might have been for the last week, I might have been seeing 30, 40 people a day. But I wasn't hiking that often with people because I was going a bit further every day than most people. So. How was the nav and how was it physically for walking? Yeah, it's on. Uh, yeah, um, so it, it's um, it was very easy. You're, you've got a, a, a made, maintained trail in wilderness. So if you stepped off, you would be in rocks and all sorts. Uh, and there's an amazing app which you download all the data. So you work offline and it's a map and it has recent comments from whenever you were last connected. And the recent comments are probably the most useful thing because particularly through the desert where the water is so scarce and you're filling up from these trickles, it might be a torrent in early March. And by late May, when I started, it might not exist. Uh, and some of the refills were pretty, pretty horrible because I didn't have a choice, but I had when I was purifying, it was fine. It was when I stopped purifying that it wasn't fine. So. How did your feet hold up? Um, yeah, they were pretty trashed. Um, and I, I, I hadn't anticipated the blisters. And in the end, after I had blisters on blisters, and I cut open my shoes, and I did compede and moleskin, and it, I could only settle it with a piece of pipe lagging I found by the side of the road and I stuck that on top of everything and that calmed it down but the, the thing I hadn't really anticipated was over that distance I think your arch must drop and so I, I'm, I'm a, a, a European 44 and by my fifth pair of shoes I was a European 45.5 so I went up one and a half sizes but they've thankfully they've come back again hello Pretty light. Is there anything that you wish you would pack additionally to do with this? Um, I'm pleased with the choices I made for me. I think if I were doing it again, I mean, I spent a lot of time planning and preparing and shaving everything. If I could wave a magic wand, I would have improved my diet, but there's not a lot of choice. And you get to these small backcountry stores they're providing a, 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 a very reduced subset that's aimed specifically at hikers, and hikers want M&Ms and Pringles and rum and noodles. So it's like, well, short of dehydrating your food, which would be nice, but I didn't have time or a dehydrator. So, um, so, so that was my, that's my complete shelter. So that's my bug net and the tarp uh, and uh, that weighs 300 grams. So a tent, a lightweight one person tent weighs a kilogram. So that was less than a third of a, of a lightweight tent. But I didn't use it, you know, nine out of 10 nights, I was just sleeping out under the stars. So. How much uh, weight did you lose over the course of your hike? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, uh, another excellent question. Uh, particularly when I was ill at the halfway point, I went, so, so through chemo, it, it got, it got so ragged that I was on the cusp of a, of a feeding tube. And um, on my hike, I got down to the same weight. <laughs> so, but I put it back on. So <laughs> just, uh, maybe is it intermittent fasting said to be good for you, maybe? <laughs> Hello. So did you come across any beers or vampires? Yeah, um, so I've had very close encounters with a bear and with a mountain lion on previous trips, like an arm's length from both. Uh, and this trip, I saw far too many snakes, like very close. But amazingly, I didn't see a bear and I didn't see a mountain lion. I'm sure 
they were there. I met one young woman who saw 17 bears, and I met another young woman who <clears throat> was hiking alone late at night, and she was convinced that she was being followed by a mountain lion. For anybody that doesn't know a mountain lion, I didn't know before I saw one a few years ago. It's big enough to be in a zoo. It's a puma is its other name. They're huge. Um, and so <laughs> she had an hour and a half to get to the, the campground where she knew other people were going to be. So for that 90 minutes, she phoned her parents. Imagine being a parent with your child on the phone saying, I think I'm being trailed by a mountain lion. And it's just like, what would you do? As a, I mean, it would be awful. So did you have a plan for if you had encountered a mountain lion? Uh, well, there's kind of folklore about what you're supposed to do. Make yourself big and shout. I, I probably would have shat myself and <laughs> just... <laughs> um, so yeah. How do you recharge your phone? Um, so, yeah, so because you always had to stop for food, you need enough battery to last you somewhere between three and five days was the typical resupply. So uh, you put everything in airplane mode, which was great because you'd switch off from all the rubbish. I had a spare battery and I didn't use my phone other than navigating and photos. So all of these are on my phone. All these photos were on my phone. Peter. I genuinely thought Starlink, I was, when I spoke, so the first hiker I saw the next day, and I was like, how do I raise this without, <laughs> without him just running away? And, and I was really sensitive, and I said, I don't suppose you were looking at the sky at about 10 o'clock last night? And he just, just exploded. He said, oh my God, did I see the sky? Do you know what that was? I said, uh, what, what was? <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, he was an aerospace engineer, and he was the one that told me about Starlink. And I was like, oh, oh, I look forward to seeing that one day. Um, yeah. Did your pot noodles ever get soft without a stove? Your ramen that you're... Uh, you actually, like I can't imagine. Yeah, the, so no, no, it, 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 so, so, so in, my, in, in, in that tub, um, I would... Um, so... I would, uh, I would wake at about 5 a.m. and I would be packed and hiking within 20 or 30 minutes. And after about 40 minutes of hiking, I would eat my breakfast from my bowl. And that would take me through, I'd hike for about five hours. I would sit down and have a second breakfast for maybe half an hour, hike for five hours. I'd take about an hour for a siesta, a swim, my lunch. And then mid-afternoon, I would soak the noodles and whatever other rubbish in my tub and hike with it for maybe an hour. And then I'd eat it, usually whilst hiking at about six. And then I would feel like Superman. I was full of food. And I could go all the way through till nine o'clock, eight or nine o'clock, no bother. And I was quite fussy. So sometimes I'd go through till 10, just finding somewhere flat and nice with a view. Although a view at 10 o'clock was perhaps <laughs> pointless. So. Uh, no, it worked. It, it, worked. It, was a, it worked for me. I did get slightly tired of it after 77 days. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and I, yeah, your, your metabolism goes into overdrive, so I was probably aiming, f it's, it's a balance between what you want and what you can carry. So you look for very calorie dense food, which tends to be the rubbish that I've been giving out as prizes, because I'm sick of it. So maybe four and a half, five thousand calories a day, but that's quite a weight. And if you're only, if your base weight is three or four kilos, and you're carrying five liters, so plus five kilos of water, plus you could easily be carrying another five kilos of food. And the whole idea is to get it as light as possible. Um, so. Was there a reason you stopped purifying your water? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, stupidity. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, went through, uh, I went through the High Sierra and it was, uh, there was so much snow melt that the streams were so active that you could look up and you think, well, there can't be anything bad above me because it's all snow melt. And so I just got in the habit of just filling and just walking. Um, and then I carried on doing that through Northern California where it's tiny trickles and it might be a pipe that's coming out of a hillside, but you don't know, you don't know the origin. And I could feel like on the final descent before I actually started throwing up, like I could feel that 
it was a big mistake. And I thought it was Giardia, and eventually I went for a test, and it wasn't. But it, whatever it was, it lasted for quite a while. But then maybe I was quite wasted. Maybe a, maybe an ordinary bug on a very <coughs> on a very wasted body, body becomes more serious than it would have done otherwise. I don't know. Um, you've been a fantastic audience. Thank you very much. Please think about giving to, to Maggie's. Um, I will go. I was going to watch Northern Lights, but it's overcast, so I'm probably going to go to the bow bar just over the way if anybody wants to carry on. Um, if you've got any questions, grab me or email me, um, and uh, hopefully this has inspired you to go out and do your own your own trail. Got a bucket from under here. I've got a bucket as well, a Halloween bucket. <laughs> and don't put the prize back in. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.